Patch 10.2 has a bunch of new hunter pets that look absolutely amazing and in this video I'm going to be running through 10 of those and how to obtain them. First up we're going to talk about these dream bears which is a bear type so it will be a tenacity pet. And the one we're going to talk about in particular is this blue coloration because it can only be found on one of the mobs within the dream. Getting this pet even though it was a named spawn was actually quite straightforward. You would head to a cave in the Haven Cascades. You go inside the cave, you know you'll be in the right one because there'll be a bunch of dream bears inside it as well. You'll head to the upper section once you get to the back and you should just find it walking around. On the PTR it was quite a short respawn timer, maybe that'll be changed for live. But outside of that nothing else dangerous to know, I didn't need to freeze trap it the damage it dealt was quite low although I did need to be beast mastery to be able to tame it so you will have to switch over to beast mastery get your tame and you will have your first pet on this list the next pet up is going to be these dream talons and they're this weird mix between like a raptor and a cat but I think they look really good and it is going to be in the raptor family which will make it a cunning pet although that does also mean any hunter spec is going to be able to tame this and there's going to be one in particular that will have a unique color in it. it's going to have this kind of like purplish color which we can find on one mob within the dream the mob we're looking for is Ristar the Rabid and it only spawns in one place which is going to be kind of north-ish of the center of the zone. If you head over there you'll find an area called the Verdissant Thicket and you should find a cave here and inside the cave should be the rare. Its respawn timer was around 30 to 60 minutes and then you'll just go in the cave and you'll be able to pick it up. Although you may have a little bit of issues early on because there are going to be people seeing it as a rare. They're going to be flying in and trying to kill it. So you may want to wait for off hours or you may want to wait for like once the content's dried out a little bit to be able to pick up your team. Alternatively, you could pick up one of the other dream talents found within the dream. There's going to be five different color variations currently tameable. And to be honest, they all look pretty good. But if you do want a unique one, then you would be going after Ristar. We are quickly approaching 90,000 subscribers, which is crazy. So when we hit that benchmark, I will be giving away three store mounts for EU or NA, any mount of your choice from that store. So do make sure you're subscribed if you're not already. The next pets we're going to talk about are some of my favorites on the list. And these are going to be the fawn kind of infused pets that you'd find within Drustvar. And these are now tameable. There's going to be three different types for us to tame. There'll be a bear, a stag, and also a cat. Although they are a little bit of a pain to tame, it is going to take you a bit of time to get hold of what we need. But if you do want one of these pets, I think it's worth the effort. So how this is going to work is you'll need to first of all get your hands on a thorn laden heart. Now, depending on which heart you've got will depend on which one you're able to tame. Luckily, it drops from a specific mob type so you can target the pet that you want. For example, if you're after the thorn bear, then what we'll do is kill bears found within the dream and eventually you'll get your thorn laden heart. Or if you want the cat, then once again, you'll kill the sabers found within the dream and you eventually get the heart for that instead. In terms of the best places to farm each of the hearts, first of all, let's talk about the sabers. There's going to be an area just kind of rightish of lush dream crags. There's going to be a bunch of sabers here. There'll be like two main packs of them and I was able to clear out one pack move over to the other clear out the other pack and by the time I'd done that and was heading back to the first pack it was already starting to respawn so I pretty much always had something to kill and pretty much in this same area as well you'll find a bunch of stags that we can farm for the stag heart this is a world quest area so the mobs spawn pretty quickly because of that so I would definitely recommend that for the sabers and the stags the bears on the other hand were a little bit more tricky. I couldn't really find a good spot to do this. There was that cave where we got the initial bear that we talked about, the dream bear. There's that cave with a bunch of bears in that we can kill, but they didn't seem to respawn too quickly. So you will be waiting around a little bit. There is also an area near the Spriggan River, kind of to the bottom left of the zone. And there will be these owl bears there, although they are classed as hybrid beasts. And I was farming them for a while, didn't get a heart drop. But the heart drop chance isn't very high anyway. It was taking me about 30 to 40 minutes just to get one of the drops for each of the other ones, for the cats, for the stags, etc. So it could just be I got on looker. If this is an area that they can drop in though, this would be a great area because there is a ton of the mobs here anyway. Once you've gotten the heart that you're after, or if you want to wait until you've got one of each type, that's completely fine as well. Because even though they are unique items, they're different from each other. So you can have one of each thorn laden heart within your inventory. Either way though, once you've gotten your hearts, what we'll do then is head all the way over to Drustvar. You're going to head over to here in Drustvar and here we'll find a stag called Athane. You'll be able to speak to them. You'll click the dialogue. If you've got multiple hearts and there'll be multiple light lines of dialogue that you've got to go through. And once you've done that, you'll now get an item called the Moon Touched Thorns. 
Now, if you're unable to find the stag, it does patrol a little bit around the area. So you do want to have a look around there. And it also does appear in the den that we're going to be going to in a moment. So you may want to look over there. But either way, I would definitely do like a slash target just to make life a little bit easier. I'll have the text for its name on screen now. You'll just slash target and eventually you'll find it and talk to it. Sometimes it does seem to completely disappear as well. So if you feel like you're going crazy, then don't worry, you're not. Once you've gotten the moon touch fawns, now we're going to find Ulthar, which is in the cave kind of north up above. We're going to go inside the cave and you'll talk to them. And the last dialogue option they'll have is I have seen some animals that look like they're part plant. Can you tell me more about them? And then you'll be able to choose that you've had the fawns blessed. Once that is done, you'll end up with a ritual knife. And if you mouse over it, it'll tell you for what animal type it is for. So if you handed in the thorn heart for a stag, then now you're going to have the thorn speaker ritual knife for stags in particular. And that's how the first steps of the process is going to work for all of the thorn beasts. So you will have to do this regardless of which one you're trying to tame. And the ritual knife only has a one time use and there will be different color variations of the thorn beast as well. So if you do want to kind of hunt a specific color variation, you're going to have to grind the heart again, go get a ritual knife again, and then get the spawn to happen and rinse and repeat that. And we'll talk more about the spawns in particular for each one in a moment. The first of the fawn beasts we're going to talk about will be the fawn bears and those are going to come in three different color variations for you to pick up. There'll be a brown color, a dark color and also a green color. And once you've gotten your hands on the knife, the next step will be to head to the Emerald Dream again and you'll head over to the Spriggan River and now you'll find a corpse or a bear here called Estera, although currently on the PTR it's called Displaced Brussels Brune. So whichever one is there, it doesn't really matter. You'll kill it. And then you'll use the knife on the corpse and now a mob is going to spawn which is going to be that fawn bear that we can tame. And unfortunately the colour variation that you get spawn will be completely random. So if you're after a specific colour you're just going to have to repeat these steps over and over as I said before. The respawn time is pretty quick but do be careful that someone doesn't kind of snipe in and take your spawn when it happens. So just be a little bit wary of that. Next up, we're going to talk about the Thorn Books, and these are going to be stags, so that means it is a tenacity pet, but it will be tameable by any hunter spec. And there will be three different color variations of these. There will be a black, a brown, and a green. Similar to the bear, you'll get your hands on the Ritual Knife, you'll head back to the Emerald Dream, and now we're going to head to the southwest of the zone, kind of where the Everbloom event happens on that area of the zone. You should now find a stag walking around this little area called Agir. It doesn't walk too far, but you know, once again, maybe do a slash tag if you're struggling to find it you'll find it you'll kill it you'll use the knife on it and now it'll spawn the thorn book which will be able to tame and you'll get your hands on that hunter pet and now on to the final thorn beast which is going to be the thorn claws and this is going to be a cat so it will be a ferocity pet and this will come in three color variations as well there'll be a black a green and a pale the exact same as the other two what we're going to do is get our hands on the ritual knife we're going to head back to the dream and then there's going to be a cave found within sprinkling gloom and inside that cave, you'll find an NPC called Laluna. It's going to be a little like cat thing on the ground, a saber. You'll kill it once more. You'll use the knife on it. And now the spawn cat will spawn. You can tame that and get yourself that pet as well. The next pets up are going to be these Umbra Claws. They're kind of like these owl bears. I think they look really cool. There's going to be five different color variations, but there's one that really stands out to me. And it's this kind of like purpley indigo color. Although these aren't quite bears, they're actually feather manes, so we will need the Tome of Hybrid Beast Taming to be able to tame them. If you haven't unlocked this on your account yet, then you will need to go through the entire Legion kind of class order haul campaign as a hunter. And you'll get to the very last quest, which is Night of the Wilds. So you'll complete that, and that'll now allow you to purchase the item from a vendor in your class order haul. Once you've got the Tome, we're going to go a little bit northeast of the Lush Dream Crags, and you should find an area with a few of those owl bears in it. Although they're going to spawn in different random colors. So if the indigo one isn't there, you're going to have to kill them all, wait for them to respawn and keep doing that until you do get the color that we're after. This is one of the harder ones to get. If you want the other color variations, then it's probably going to be easier from that Spriggan River that we were talking about earlier. Just head over there and most of the color variations are readily available to tame. The next pet on our list is going to be the Somnowls. And these are going to be cunning pets because they are birds of prey. And I really like these. I'm a big fan of owl things in general. So these owl pets, really good. There's going to be four different color variations. But if you ask someone who likes to kind of collect every type of pet, then this one may send you into madness because there's going to be different horn styles. There's going to be different ear types, different tail types. 
plus the different color types as well and the eyebrow types too so there's going to be hundreds maybe in the thousands of different combinations but for this video we're going to be going after the blue one with the kind of curved horns the big ears the big brows and we'll find this in the northeast of the zone in the char what we're going to do is fly up to kind of like the floating islands and you'll find some of these thumbnails around the area if you don't find the color variation that we're after, you will have to kill them, wait for them to respawn, and keep doing that until we do get our blue one, and then we can tame that and get our pet. If you like spirit beasts, then get hyped, because the next pet we're going to talk about is a spirit beast that looks very similar to the lower that we've seen in BFA, and that is going to be Solraka, and it's going to be this kind of like orange tiger. It is a spirit beast, so it will be a tenacity pet, and it will only be tameable by beast mastery hunters, and it will be a bit of a hunt as well. I was waiting for around an hour to be able to see the track, so do be expecting to wait a while to even be able to tame this pet, especially with a lot of competition. And the way this is going to work, at least by the information gathered by Matt Jay-Z on Wowhead, is it's going to follow a path counterclockwise in an area to the right of a Merdrafil. I'll have a map showing you on screen the data that Matt kind of collected, and it just kind of slowly walks around this path. However, it's going to be completely invisible. You're not even going to be able to see it with track hidden. The only way you'll be able to find it is looking out for these kind of footprints, these heavy tracks on the ground, looking at which direction they're pointing, kind of following it until you find the next set of tracks and keep doing that until you basically run out of tracks. And when you've run out of tracks, it means it's going to be in the area. It does walk fairly slow. So what we're going to do once we know roughly where it is, we're going to throw down a flare. It's going to reveal it. You're going to throw down a freezing trap or a hunter's mark, either works. And then you're going to begin your tame. Once again, making sure you are beast mastery spec to be able to tame it. And then you'll be able to get your tame on that spirit beast. The next pet we're going to talk about is this green skunk. It is going to be a new kind of pet we can tame, which is skunks. And it is currently the only tameable skunk. It's going to be under the rodent family, which will make it a cunning pet. And to get your hands on this pet, we will need to find a rare called Henry Snufftail, which is a great name as well. And it will keep that name as well once you've tamed it. So it makes things a little bit better. What we're going to do is head over to the Lush Dream Crags and here you'll find Heaven Cascades and there'll be a cave here that will spawn inside. It is going to be a rare part of the adventure achievement so you may have some competition trying to tame this. The respawn timer on this did seem fairly long as well, around one to two hours, so you may be waiting a while for this to spawn. Once it's up, get your tame, and you should now have your hands on Henry Snufftail, as long as there's not been too much kind of interference from other people. You may want to once again wait until the content kind of dries up a little bit, and then you'll have no interruptions when you're trying to get it. The next pet we're going to talk about are these Dream Sabers, and once again, look absolutely amazing. I really like these. They will be cats, so they will be ferocity pets. And there's going to be, I think, four different color variations of these. But in this, we're going to be focusing on the teal, but mainly the yellow one, because there's only going to be one source for the yellow. And it will take a little bit of work to get. And I, I do kind of like the more unique looking pets. So to get your hands on the yellow one, we're actually going to head to that spot I recommended early on for farming the sabers, where that kind of world quest hub is. And you're going to find a bunch of these verdant dream sabers. And what you'll need to do is just keep killing them off until you do get the yellow one spawn. It took me about 15 minutes of killing them to get it to spawn, so it is kind of like a low spawn chance. But there is quite a lot of these mobs in the area, so it shouldn't take you too long to be able to get that spawn. Once it's up though, you will be able to grab your hands on that yellow dream saber. Now there is actually one more spirit beast coming in the patch that we know about at least. And I had intended to include it in the first 10 hunter pets, but it has been changed recently and we currently aren't able to obtain it. We, we don't know how to tame it. Now, this pet is Naki. It's going to be this flame bird and it's going to look pretty much identical to the mount we'll be able to get from Mythic in the raid. And that's kind of where the current theories lie, is that if we do the raid in one way, shape or form, we're going to be able to get our hands on an item called the Cinder of Companionship, which when used attunes yourself with the flames of change, letting you tame a particular creature. So once you get that item, it should be a simple case of finding the bird, which is going to be quite easy. It's flying around a Mirdrasil. Once again, it does have a bit of a long respawn, but once it's up, it should be flying very high around a Mirdrasil. And then what you're going to want to do is wait for it to be on the right side of a Mirdrasil, where the roots are at the highest. You're going to pull it down. Um, I used disengage for this and it was fine-ish. I did die a couple of times trying. But once you get the position in right and the disengage timer fine, you'll land on the root, the bird will come down, and now you'll be in combat with it. It will take a few attempts to get this right because it is very finicker, and I'd imagine a goblin glider will probably make life a little bit easier. But either way, once you've got this cinder of companionship and you pull it down and tame it, hopefully you know the rest of this kind of method remains the same. It's just going to be getting that item. 
then you should be able to tame it and get your hands on this really cool looking spirit beast. So that does bring us to the end of the list and hopefully you're as excited as I am for all the new hunter pets that we're going to be able to pick up in the patch. As always, a big thanks to Petopia and the people who contribute to Petopia, such as Arrowim and Matt, for putting the information together. If you want to check out all the different pets coming in 10.2 and the colour variations, definitely check out the website. There'll be a link in the description below. Outside of that, thanks for watching. Look out for more guides coming soon. See ya.